Hi, I'm Eric Beard. I want to talk a bit about undulating periodization or hybrid periodization. This is going to go along with our Mod 6 assignment for the CalU Integrated Sports Performance Training uh, program that we have. It's going to be connected to the final, but the concepts of hybrid training or this kind of concept of undulating training could be helpful for a lot of different folks. This is a basic overview or an introduction to the concept and it will help with the application I think in many people's trainings approach. We do want to spend a certain amount of weeks in a certain type of training, certain phase to allow those adaptations to occur. It generally is going to take at least two weeks for neuromuscular adaptation to occur within the kinetic chain and for some individuals it might take as long as 12 weeks. In the average fitness environment we approximate it's going to take about four weeks. But some of the factors that will contribute to someone's speed of adaptation uh, their age, their training history, their gender, the type of training, their sleep, their nutrition, their supplementation, their compliance to their programs when they're not working with their professional, uh, any regeneration or recovery techniques they're going to do, outside stress, their job, type of the season, type of year. And there's probably a few other things that go in that too, but it's, it's a fairly broad spectrum. So we're saying anywhere between 2 to 12 weeks for neuromuscular adaptation to occur or for us to achieve some of the benefits or desired adaptations from a stimulus of training. If we're following NASM's OPT methodology, starting someone out in phase 1, trying to achieve stabilization endurance, spending approximately 4 weeks in phase 1, then moving to phase 2 for strength endurance, and in this situation, this scenario, we're going to top talk then about jumping up towards power training, we're talking a bit about training for golf with this particular case study, and we would be spending about four weeks in each phase. So we're assuming that we're spending at least 12 weeks with this client first, doesn't have to be that, but that's the picture we're painting, and then we're trying to peak this individual either for a tournament or for a season. So instead of regressing or reverting back to a specific phase of training for an entire month, since we've stacked adaptation on top of adaptation off on top of adaptation for over 12 weeks, we're now going to go to this undulating or hybrid type training where we can hopefully maintain the benefits of these phases of training uh, and then rotate them through on a regular basis. So let's run through a scenario and how this might be applied. For this case, we can imagine that on Saturday is when golf is going to be played or Sunday, maybe even both days in the weekend depending on if it's a tournament or just for fun. And This is just a scenario uh, for golf, but this could be applied to, applied to 5K running cycling, you name the sport. So we'd start off the first day of the week, uh, well, let's go with total body programming, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We can also put in regeneration or recovery techniques. We can also put in cardio, but let's just assume we're doing a total body workout with core balance and reactor training included with that, following the components of a workout within NASM's OPT methodology. So if they're playing golf on Saturday or Sunday, from this scenario, let's say that we have a uh, They've got a, a tournament on Saturday and they're going to be off on Sunday or doing work around the house or family time because they're probably not going to be allowed out of the house two days in a row on the weekend if they've got a family. So let's just say that they're playing golf. Throw a little G up there for Saturday. Sunday's going to be off. Monday, they're probably still going to be recovering just a bit. Maybe we follow a phase two protocol. That would be our strength endurance training from NASM. We could come in on Wednesday follow a phase 5 protocol, and then on Friday, phase 1. We're going to have greater volume of intensity during a phase 2 program, or sorry, greater volume of work during a phase 2 program, a higher intensity with a phase 5 program, and phase 1 can almost be looked at a recovery or a preparation day. Minimize imbalances, get some, get some fresh blood flow, work on a flushing uh, getting any of the toxins out of the body, working on neuromuscular efficiency, coordination, basically preparing someone to excel here. You could also look at that the other way, where we would have phase five at the beginning of the week, I'm sorry, phase one at the beginning of the week, looking at a little bit more of a recovery aspect there. There's a, de there's a great degree of flexibility with this, but the overall concept of applying different phases on different days of the week, once someone spends significant portions of time in one of those phases, allows us to apply this undulating or hybrid training. The concept originally came about when the hope was to maintain the benefits achieved in Phase 1, Phase 2, or Phase 5 with athletes during their season. And what we've seen when we're applying this is we're actually able to make gains with athletes by applying these types of training, different phases of training on different days in conjunction with their sport or their program. So they've established a base moving through over weeks. They get up to that point where they're peaked and then they can cycle or undulate these phases of training. Because the old adage goes, if you don't use it, you 
lose it, right? So you want to maintain stabilization endurance, you want to maintain strength endurance, and you want to maintain that power, explosiveness, and power endurance as well. You just don't want to overtrain, you don't want to do too much. So listening to your client, watching their performance, looking at their resting blood pressure, looking at their resting heart rate, asking them about soreness, looking at their performance during their sport, looking at their performance during their exercise, having them keep journals and logs, um, measuring their body weight, me making sure you're keeping track of their sleep and nutrition, um, their motivation, making sure that their appetite is staying up, their engagement within their sport, their engagement and willingness to exercise, all these different things that we want to explore just to make sure that our clients are keeping their energy levels up, they're getting enough rest and enough recovery, and then applying these concepts can be a fun way to keep them engaged because it's stimulating, it's a different workout each day, but it's also making sure that we're maintaining the benefits that we've achieved over a period of time and potentially even taking steps with stabilization endurance, strength endurance, and power. I'm Eric Beard. Thanks for watching.